Greetings from Boston. I hope everyone is doing well and good morning. In a few hours, Roger Federer will face Novak Djokovic in the Cincinnati Masters final. This will be their 46th meeting. It will be their 18th title match, and it will be the fourth time they've played in the Cincinnati final. Federer looks to have an advantage going into this final based on the history, at least at the Cincinnati Masters final, because he is 3-0 to zero against Djokovic in the final. Let's preview this match briefly and talk about it. I'm going to be back later today or possibly tomorrow morning with a review of the match as it happened. I hope everyone is doing well. Subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. This is Tennis Talk Daily. Without question, this is going to be a very consequential match for both players. Djokovic, the reigning Wimbledon champion, is of course attempting to consolidate his standing as someone who has come back and is now a part, a legitimate part of the big three. Roger Federer, meanwhile, has had a fairly good season. He did win the Australian Open. He skipped clay and was the big favorite coming into Wimbledon. But as you all know, he suffered that very disappointing defeat to Kevin Anderson in that marathon match in the quarterfinal. This will be their 46th meeting in total. Djokovic leads the aggregate head-to-head 23 three to 22 but in Cincinnati finals as I said before Federer is just unbreakable literally unbreakable no one can break his serve in this tournament let's take a look at the last couple of times Djokovic and Federer have met in the Cincinnati final the last time was in 2015 now 2015 mind you was arguably Novak Djokovic's greatest year on record and some would argue it was the greatest tennis season ever recorded by a male player. Well, Federer took down Djokovic in straight sets, 7-6, 6-3 in the 2015 final. Djokovic's second serve percentage in that match was fairly low, and he couldn't secure a single break point against Federer's serve. On the other hand, Federer was only able to convert one of his eight break points against Djokovic and yet still won the match. In the first set, he took the tiebreaker very decisively, 7-1. In the meeting before that, it was in 2012, and Federer was having a pretty good year in 2012. Of course, he beat Djokovic uh, at Wimbledon. I believe it was in the semifinal. But in that match, the final score was a little more convincing in the first set, a lot more convincing. It was six love. There was a bagel dealt out there, and then the next set went to a tiebreaker where Federer won 9-7, so that was a pretty close tiebreak. Federer converted a lot better in this match. He converted three of his four break points, and yet again, Novak Djokovic could not get a single break point on the Federer serve in the 2012 Cincinnati final. They also met in 2009, where Federer prevailed in straight sets. Djokovic actually did break Federer's serve in that match, but on balance, Federer came out the victor. Well, Based on that history, you really do have to give Federer the advantage going into this final. I think Djokovic has come through some pretty tough customers to get to the final. First, Steve Johnson, then Adrian Manorino, Grigor Dimitrov, Milos Raonic, and yesterday, Marin Cilic. He's dropped a set in all of those matches except for his opening round with Steve Johnson. And he played his only tiebreak in the match with Steve Johnson, but it was a straight set victory, as I said. Federer, meanwhile, has plowed through Goyocek, Leonardo Meyer, Stan Wawrinka, and yesterday, David Goffin. Although David Goffin did retire in the match yesterday, Federer looked 
fine yesterday. He was having a hard time bringing his ground game up to a workable and respectable level. He was holding his serve fine, but what happened in the second set, of course, he took the first set in the tiebreaker and kind of started to turn on, but you could feel in the second set that Federer was starting to kind of turn it up and Goffin was kind of suffocating in addition to having a shoulder problem. I guess it was over here in the right shoulder. But so Goffin did retire, but Federer was looking strong at the end of that match. So coming into this final, Federer will have another advantage insofar as he didn't have to play a very long match yesterday, whereas Djokovic had to play three pretty tough sets against Chilich. In terms of the mental state, I think Djokovic has been suffering a bit this week. He has just been getting rattled very easily. Of course, he smashed his racket in the match against Raonic, but he's been able to kind of turn it around and through force of will prevail in these matches. So that is very promising for Djokovic in a way. He can turn that negative energy into a win, essentially, in the end, uh, or he has been in a number of these matches. Federer, on the other hand, has been looking very even-keeled in terms of his mental state. Stolid, serene, and notwithstanding some of the views that have been expressed by commentators that it's actually good for Federer to be grumpy, I think I prefer him, again, stolid, serene, unemotional, focused, committed, and that is what he's been showing this week. Federer's serve looks incredibly dependable this week. He is virtually unbreakable in Cincinnati. I think it's been 97 straight service games that he's held. Well, Novak Djokovic, by contrast, has been broken 13 times this week. Well, You put those two facts together and it does seem almost inevitable that Roger Federer will have an edge at least going in. I mean, anything is possible here, folks. But I think on balance, given the numbers, given the history, I mean, if this were at Wimbledon, it might be a different kind of calculus that we applied. If this were on the red dirt, it would certainly be a bit different. But given Federer's history at Cincinnati, given his I think his desire to redeem after that disappointing match against Anderson, I think he's going to have a lot of fire coming in to this final. He'll be well-rested. He'll be shooting for his record eighth title in Cincinnati, his 99th career title, his 68th hardcourt title, and his 28th Masters 1000. Djokovic, meanwhile, will be going for his 31st Masters title, his 70th career title, and if he can win today, he will be the first man in history to have won all of the Masters 1000 events. So Djokovic, in a way, on the cusp of history, but Federer is too, if you think about it, because he's going for a record eighth title at Cincinnati. So this could be close. It could go three, but again, I think the smart money is on Roger Federer, folks. Drop a comment. I want to know your views. I will be back either later today or tomorrow to give you a full review and analysis of the final as it happened. Hope everyone is well. Bye for now.